Um, if we can uh, go back now to where I was going to start, and that is actually with um, uh, leadership. So if we can, you know, Ronan uh, talked a lot about it, and uh, you've alluded to it as well, but if I can just ask you in a, in a nutshell, your opinion, there's been big books written on about it, articles written on about it, but if we can just get two minutes from you on what is great leadership. Okay. Blimey. Well, I think, uh, and it is kind of maybe overlapping a bit from, from earlier, but I, I think I could try and put it into three kind of bits. The first is a great, what characterizes a great leader, I think, is the ability to listen. Really listen. We did a, a session, a leadership session with Toyota, one of, one of our clients, up at Manchester City in the Etihad stage, bizarrely, don't ask why. Um, it was very interesting because they've got a new CEO and he's come from Barcelona and Barcelona's a fantastic, you know, a very highly acclaimed football club and he's, a, he's, a, he's dropped me as a proper leader. Um, and one of the people who joined us for two days was Patrick Vieira. And for those of you who don't follow football, Patrick Vieira is a French guy. He won the World Cup. He played for Arsenal for a long time, won the uh, Premiership, I believe, at Arsenal. He certainly did at Manchester City. And, and he also worked, he played for Milan, one of the Milan teams under Jose Mourinho, where they won the Champions League. So he's, he's won everything there is to, to win. He's won the lot. And he was there, and he's been trained like as a management-y person, which is quite, I thought, pretty enlightened, actually. <coughs> Uh, he's annoyingly handsome, that's the only thing that's a bit, <laughs> really tall, handsome bloke. But anyway, uh, 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 just nice as well, which makes it worse. But he, he, uh, he was great. He was asked the question, he said, oh, Patrick, you've worked under some of the three of the greatest sports leaders, certainly in Europe, Jose Mourinho, Arsene Wenger, and Roberto Mancini now in, in Man City. What, what characterizes those? And he, he was really, he was right on it. He said, right, there's two things. One, in this is particular, because they're, they're very much media brands in a way, they're always in front of the media. The first is that the media persona of each of those three, and they were quite different in their way, um, is completely different to the man that he got to know as a player. He said they were brilliant, that they never let the media, they, kept, they never gave them the key to their soul. They never, in, particularly Mourinho, who's, for those of you who don't know, very arrogant, very I'm the special one, I'm the guy. Apparently he's the opposite, normally. But the, but the but pertinent to this point is, he said that all three are excellent listeners. They, they ask questions. They want to know, because all these kids have played football, they're all young. You know, what's your relationship like with your family? What are you scared of? Who's your best friend? When was the biggest trouble you were in? Who, who you're in love with at the moment? All that stuff, to listen, 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 and then work out their place in the team. And he said the greatest listener was the one you least expect, which is Jose Mourinho. He would spend hours with each of them. And I think, that the, so listening as a leader, I think poor leaders tend to make a decision or, 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 or talk based on the very last conversation they had. So they're constantly changing their view based on the last person they spoke to. And they don't do it. It's unwitting. It just happens. Whereas I think strong leaders make sure they talk to a lot of people and get lots of feedback. They listen. But the second element <coughs> is um, to decide. The willingness to personally make a decision. Um, Shimon Peres, uh, previous uh, Prime Minister of Israel, defined leadership as the courage to be alone. So this notion that you can get all this input, now go for a little walk, go and buy your own Starbucks or something. Just have a little moment, because you are going to decide, because you are accountable. Don't be taken by the latest thing. So to listen, then to decide, and then thirdly, to act. What I was saying earlier, execution, <coughs> do something. Don't prevaricate. Don't get stakeholder management meetings and because of the diary, it's going to take three months. Act, 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 act. Those are, I think those are three things that distinguish great leaders. Yeah, we interviewed Max Clifford as well and he was saying that one of the, peop one of the things he's noticed in all of the people that he's worked with, the very successful ones, is that they back their own judgment and their own instincts and they don't get swayed. Mm. Because if you get swayed by a very persuasive wrong person, that's not a good thing, is it? <laughs>